you need to master the in-plane technique. In short, you need to align the probe, the cannula, and the long axis of the vessel. I wish I could come to your department and show you hands-on, but for now we'll have to make do. This lesson is heavy on details, but it's by mastering these that you will become an expert at central lines. So we prefer the long axis in-plane approach, but what does that actually mean? Let's break it down. The ultrasound fan originating from the probe creates a 2D picture on the screen. How we rotate the probe determine how we visualize the vessel in this 2D picture. Now the vessel is essentially a long tube. If we place the plane across the vessel, we get the short axis view, and the tube appears as a circle. If we place the plane along the vessel, it's called the long axis view, and you see the length of the tube. The vessel appears as a horizontal bar. There's also a middle way, the oblique view. It's obtained by going halfway between short and long axis. We'll get back to you why you need to master this in just a little bit. In-plane and out-of-plane refers to how we visualize the cannula with regards to the ultrasound fan. We're going to demonstrate this using a bag of saline. With the out-of-plane approach, the needle enters the skin perpendicular to the ultrasound field, so it appears as a hyperechoic dot on the screen. We're not very fond of this approach. It's very easy to be fooled. It's possible to think that you're looking at the tip when you're in fact looking at the mid-shaft of the cannula, because all you see is a dot. Meanwhile, the tip can be lodged deep in the lung. This has happened. However, this can be mitigated by consistently using dynamic tip visualization. Basically, you move the probe away until you no longer see the dot, then advance the cannula until you see it again. We rarely use this for central lines, but it does have its use for arterial lines. What we want to achieve is a perfectly aligned, perfectly parallel cannula and ultrasound beam approaching a long axis view of the vessel, seen as a beautiful black band in the right part of the screen, which is where we aim to hit the vessel with the cannula. We've inserted the cannula in plane with a clear visualization of the tip. See how we proceed towards our target with perfect control. Okay, so let's put this together again. First, achieve a perfect long axis view of the vein. This is the long axis view. Use a small sweeping motion back and forth to assess how wide the vein is and thereby where the dead center is. At this point, the vein is black and you have the crispest wall blood interface. Once you have the perfect picture, you should never move your probe. This is easier said than done, but it will help a great deal if you rest your wrist against the patient and use th three fingers to grip the probe firmly. You'll feel an urge to move the probe to find the cannula, but then you'll have lost your perfect alignment with the vein. The trick is to move the cannula, not the probe. I cannot overstate how important this is. Now pick up your cannula with an empty 2cc syringe attached to it. This serves as an improvised handle. Grab it firmly and place your index fingers as shown for extra control. Align the cannula and the ultrasound field before you puncture the skin. So this is wrong, but this is good. The probe and the cannula should be like one unit at all times. Keep this in mind when you're tilting the probe. Now we approach the target. We want to see the steel at all times, so don't accept tissue movements as a substitute. If you do not see the tip, do not advance the cannula. You may experience that you have a seemingly perfectly aligned probe and cannula when all of a sudden the cannula just disappears. Relax, no sudden movements. Don't move the probe. You don't want to lose sight of the vein. The field and the cannula are probably still parallel if you haven't done anything rash, they're just not perfectly aligned. 
The solution is lateral displacement. Shift the cannula sideways and it will pop into view again. By shifting laterally, we can make the tip reappear. Now this is how not to do it. You may find the tip, but you'll lose your alignment. The in-plane long axis technique has the advantage that it inherently leads to a shallower angle of approach to the vein. This is vital for several reasons. Due to the physics of ultrasound, it makes the cannula appear much more distinct. It also facilitates a clean puncture, as it reduces the risk of perforating the posterior wall. The shallow angle also reduces the risk of kinking the guide wire and subsequently the CVC. So, go shallow. Continuous aspiration is not necessary, but you may want to aspirate when you've punctured the vein. Use the handle grip and pull out the plunger with your pinky. It takes a bit of practice. So far we've focused on the subclave, but like we've said before, you need to be very comfortable with the IJ first. Fortunately, all the in-plane axis techniques are applicable, but with a slight adjustment. The full long axis view can be difficult to achieve on the neck with most linear probes. The solution is the oblique view. You can check out this link to see our detailed guide. But in short, in the oblique view, the vessels are sliced at a 45 degree angle, which elongates the vein. Note the distance from the vein to the left part of the screen where the needle will enter. This allows for seeing the needle before it reaches the vein. This allows for a short axis like side by side identification of vein and artery, but with a long axis like cannulation path, while keeping the artery safely visualized at all times. It's also very valuable that you can place an IJ line while standing at the patient's side rather than at the head of the bed. Another advantage is that the line finishes facing away from the patient's face. I realize we make this all look very easy. Remember, in-plane takes practice. There's a learning curve. There will be setbacks. You may have complications. But when you master it, you will be better at placing central lines.